He went from fighting fires to being fired from his job, merely from attending a leadership conference hosted in a church building. Hi, I'm Peyton Luke, and this is First Liberty Live. After 24 years of heroic service, Fire Chief Ron Hiddle was fired by the city of Stockton, California, because he attended a leadership conference that took place at a church building. So even though the city encouraged him to attend the leadership training, it opened an investigation when he attended the Willow Creek's Global Leadership Summit. So Ron, welcome to First Liberty Live, and we are excited to hear your story today. Hi, Peyton, how are you? I'm doing well, sir, doing well, sir. And also joining him today is Stephanie Taub, his attorney on this case, who will also be sharing with us the legal perspective. So, hi, Stephanie. Yeah, hi, Peyton, thank you for covering this. Absolutely. Well, hi, I'm, ex I'm excited about this particular story um, because it's, it's just so fascinating to me what actually happened after Ron's heroic service for 24 years as a public servant. So, Ron, you went from being a fire chief and having a 24 year career of admirable public service to suddenly being fired for just attending a leadership conference that was hosted in a church building. So could you take us back to when all of this happened and what the events were that led up to this moment? Sure, I, first of all, I appreciate this opportunity to say something that it's been, it has been 10 years. It's been a long road, but um, I feel like um, we're, we're heading down a good path here, but you know, the short story is, I again, I career. I loved being a firefighter. Um, had been there, again, twenty at the time about nineteen years. And had the opportunity to to serve as a fire chief, and what an honor that was. And in a in a city that's very busy, a, a city that's very difficult to be a, a fire chief in. But I was up for the challenge, and the first couple of years went really well. And I had a different city manager and a different leadership team above me, and and then. It, the wheels started to come off the bus. We got a new city manager one day, and he came in. My first meeting with him did not go well. I told him I was a Christian man and delete, I believed in serving God and, and the people that I worked with. And um, he immediately just didn't want to have that conversation and kind of moved on. And I thought, ah, oh, it's kind of odd, but I'll win him over. I figured I'd, I'd get there. And as time went on, it just continued to get worse and worse. And um, you know, the city was going through a lot of financial things, a lot of pressures and a lot of different things. But, you know, I at one point they said, hey, maybe you ought to do some leadership training with your staff and yourself. And I went off and found it was well, let me back up. There was a budget cuts. So we didn't have any money at the time. We were almost in the point where we we're going to do bankruptcy, which they eventually did. Um, and I was just looking for a leadership that wouldn't cost that much. I wouldn't have to travel out of state. It was so expensive. And, it, and that wouldn't have looked well for the, to the firefighters below me if I was leaving town and going to be gone for a week or two or, or whatever that might be um, at a conference. And so I wanted to do something quick and pretty easy. And I came across this Willow Creek Leadership Summit that I um, had heard so much about over the years and went off to it without even thinking anything of it, knowing that it would be a great opportunity to have Christian leaders, things that I would want to um, aspire to, and along with some secular leaders. And within a very few months after my attendance that I had told everybody I was going to, and a few of my other firefighters that had caught up with me, um, the, the, the uh, trouble hit, hit my, my office. And I was in big trouble with this, with my boss and my, and my immediate supervisor about going through, um, going to a Christian leadership conference. They, they were so blatant about it that you can't, you can't do that. You can't participate in things like that. Yeah. So, uh, in a nutshell, it ended up in a, in a few months after that, I was under investigation and um, led to administrative leave and then eventually a, a firing for it. Yeah. And after this being your career for so long, what was going through your mind in that moment when they called you into the office and all this started happening just out of nowhere? You know, I, I was in a daze. The, the first, I had many meetings with them when things happened. That first one, I could not believe I was hearing what I was hearing. Um, I grew up treating people with integrity, I tre treating people with kindness. And, you know, sometimes people need to be corrected, but never to the extent that they, what they did to me. Um, but I, I will tell you that God was there with me through the whole thing. I felt the peace, even though I was completely 
taken back by the words they used and the things they were saying that I shouldn't have done. Um, but I knew in my heart I didn't do anything wrong. I knew that there was protections for those kind of things. Um, but I also was scared. I have to admit, I, I thought, how am I going to take care of my family? I had two kids, or one, three children at the time, but one heading off to college within this next year and those are the most expensive times of your life and losing your job was not a good time to send your daughter to college and you know it was just all kinds of other things that had gone on in my life but during that time it was very difficult and I and I will tell you I was shell-shocked by the things they told me that day and the piece of paper they handed me and the first thing on the top of the paper was that I had gone to a leadership conference a Christian leadership conference yeah and you know you can correct me if I'm wrong but I think you were asked by the deputy city manager of the city of Stockton to attend a leadership seminar with some of your guys, and it could be of your choosing. It was. I mean, that's that was the part that was so surprised. I thought I would get accolades that I paid for. It was only $99. No conference cost $99. I, I was able to get there, you know, within a, just a few, it's for 40 minutes from the city. Um, where the conference was being held in a local church. Um, I, you know, when you add up all the little details, it's just hard to believe that that was going to be a problem for them. And afterwards, I came and told them, the best leadership conference I've been to, they should attend next year. And she just laughed at me, you know, like, that will never happen, ha-ha, you know. So it was kind of in my face about it. Sure. And when I was doing some reading, too, I thought this was a really interesting point because people probably hear, hey, it was at a church, so it was a church leadership and faith-based. But actually, the Willow Creek Global Leadership Summit isn't just faith-based. If I understand correctly, they have other thought leaders from even a secular standpoint. I was looking at some people that have been on the roster in the past, such as Jack Welch, former CEO of General Electric, Terry Kelly, um, Gore Associates, um, Tony Dungy, winning coach of 2007 Super Bowl. Like There are so many names on here that aren't just from a faith-based perspective. And yes, there were some pastors and others because, you know, they're handling and counseling people all the time, but there was a mix. There was a diversity. So that's what makes this so interesting. Yeah. The funny thing about that, a couple of the actual, uh, one specifically, Daniel Pink, who was a speechwriter for President Clinton, was on the circuit the same year that the Willow Creek Conference had, th that him as the speaker, he was on the City Managers Association um, conference as well. So the same people that told me I shouldn't have gone and heard the, these people was probably a speaker at their personal conference that they had had that same year. So there was, there was a number of secular speakers and, and it's, it's about half and half, but it was fantastic. The, the mixture was fantastic for, for, for me personally and for the department. And we took many of the things we learned there and, and implemented them as soon as we got back. So Stephanie, I want to turn to you and just get your view as far as the legal perspective. So from a legal standpoint, can the city do this on the basis of the reasons that it listed? Well, if, if you look at what the city said, they made it very clear that their problem was that this was a Christian affiliated conference, that it was a religiously affiliated conference. It didn't matter that it was a world-class conference. It didn't matter that former President Bill Clinton had spoken at, <laughs> at this conference in the past. Um, they just saw that there were, it was at a church and that was enough for them. And this is such blatant anti-religious hostility, especially anti-Christian hostility, um, and that violates, that violates the law. So there are legal protections for employees in both public and private sectors um, against religious discrimination. And so we're arguing here that this is a clear case of the city targeting Fire Chief Heddle for, because of his religious beliefs, because they didn't like his religious affiliations, because they just had such hostility and intolerance to him attending even um, a conference that wasn't purely secular and that this violates the law and it's religious discrimination. And it's not like they were going and wearing their uniform at the time or even representing the fire department or the city. They were just in normal clothes, right? Well, yeah, they, this is not, they weren't speaking at this conference. They were attending it. Um, and just the fact that the city had such 
um, you know, just such an intolerance. They, they listed this first um, for the reason why this is their their main reason why they're they're terminating an exceptional public servant. And this is a time when we need more public servants of character, of integrity, that are willing to treat everyone with respect, that are willing to make tough calls. Um, and here he even went out of his way to save the city money by attending this conference, which is was the highest, one of the highest priorities of the city at the time. Um, but none of that was factored in. All they could see was the word Christian, the word church, and therefore they started this whole investigation. Sure. Well, and Ron, I just want to turn to you now and kind of ask you, because I love hearing the client's perspective as far as their heart that was in the career and just kind of what happened. So what also inspired you to go into the work as a first responder? You know, I, I, I worked at a hospital when I was young, um, like in high school and saw how an emergency room worked and, and just how, you know, emergency medical i spent all my time i was a, i was a stock clerk so i i would have to restock everything in all the all the different areas of the hospital but i spent all my time in the emergency room and i love the fact that these i'd see firemen bringing in um people that were injured in vehicle accidents or whatever and paramedics that type of thing and then i thought at some point in time you know i i'd like to do this and then an opportunity came about i took the test and i scored high enough on the test and that was a, a god factor as well i I, with a lot of other people that had taken many, many tests, and I'd taken just one, and I scored high enough on it that I got an opportunity to, to um, be a fireman, and I, I absolutely loved it. And I, I and I will say clearly that um, I, when I first got the job, my first interview, um, the fire chief asked me, what's your goal to be in the fire department? And I said, your job. And he kind of laughed at me, and they thought, well, maybe someday, you know, joking around. But I, I love the fact of that part of the job. I love the part that being in, in, in a, a position of administration, but down in, you know, in the trenches of the firehouse, when you go on a call and you're serving the public in the city of Stockton, there are so many people that you serve that you go to all the time. It's the same people over and over again, and they're just, they're down and out. And it's such an opportunity to witness to them, have an opportunity to, I mean, every one of those calls, you can pray with them, whether they know it or not, you know, we it, it's, it's a great, place to serve and and if you've never never been a firefighter and never been a first responder in that you you don't understand how much you can make a difference in their lives sometimes and, and just the little things that you do and um my my crews the people that worked for me over the years and times we we would try to make that that experience the best for them even though they'd call 911 in an emergency or some kind of crisis but um i was very passionate about the job i absolutely loved it um i still do i still you know I do something much different today, <laughs> but um, I still think of that job as, as the best out there, as an opportunity to serve people when they need it the most. Well, thank you for your years of service and thank you for your heart just in telling this story and so that we can ensure, you know, things like this don't happen down the road to other first responders. So we just appreciate it. And is there anything else that you would like to add before we let you go? Um, the only thing I would say um, is, you know, I never had a testimony for the most part. Grew up as a Christian as a young boy, going through school, and just everything worked out just fine. And then all of a sudden, this happened. Never expected it. So I always say it all happened, and I have an opportunity to uh, have a testimony of how God brought me through it and took care of me through this, pro through this time. And even though it's been 10 years, he's still continuing to take care of me, and he will forever. And so... Regardless of where everything goes here, it's um, it's been a, it's been a great ride, and I know that God's uh, with me all the way. So thank you. My pleasure. Amen to that. And Stephanie, um, just I want to turn it back to you at the very end. What it, are the next steps for this case? Absolutely. So right now we are at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, and we will be arguing the case at the end of the month, March 27th. Um, so stay tuned for that. I'm sure we'll have more First Liberty coverage when it gets closer to the oral argument date. And then we might be a few months before we hear um, before we hear back from the court. So stay tuned. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much. We really appreciate your time and thank you for giving us the opportunity to tell this important story. Thank you. Thank you. 
Cases like Ron Hiddles are becoming all too common in America nowadays. If you or someone that you know is going through a similar situation, feel free to contact us at firstliberty.org. You can go to Get Legal Help, and that will go to our legal team, and you can submit your request. First Liberty is there to fight for you and to defend your religious liberty. First Liberty Institute, fighting for what matters most.